I'm finishing this series, for now anyway, um, the series on uh, low carbohydrate or carbohydrate percentage of the diet and mortality rate. It was an article presented in uh, Lancet. Again, huge uproar with all the folks that are interested in low carb diets, keto diets. I'm interested in that diet and uh, so I got very interested in uh, analyzing it, taking it apart. And many times I felt like the, um, the six blind men and the elephant. I, I saw different pieces of it. I'm still struggling to put it together. Unfortunately, I think like the six blind men, I'm starting to get close, uh, but I, it's still not complete reality. There's some things that I don't understand yet. And I'm gonna, we're gonna go, I'm gonna go over those in this video. One of them is the low carb, um, or the, the U curve. Let me show you the U curve. Uh, but before I do that, well, let me just show you the U curve real quick. This is the U curve, and it hits an inflection point at 51% of your diet from carbs. And guess what? <clears throat> Even the pure study, the pure study which showed a, a um, decreased lifespan from eating carbs, showed the same inflection point, about 50%. And other studies show the same inflection point, about 50%. Now, what does that mean? Uh, <clears throat> again, I'll just make a quick comment. For those of you, of you who are saying, bottom line it, simplify it. I'm going to refer back to a very popular video, movie, uh, The Notebook. It's just not th that simple. Maybe you think I'm whining and crying too, but that's the way I approach some of this. Um, I prefer a, a different image, more of a medical image. <clears throat> it's not that simple. Um, I started off the review of these articles with a series of questions that are really more oriented towards what's the quality of the study, because we got a lot of negative reactions to the study. Definition of low carb, uh, 40%, everybody else saying, whoa, that's way too high. That's not low carb. Um, and in, the fact that it was an environmental study, an observational study, you can't, it's dietary recall. Yes, all of those are big issues. But the bottom line is, after, the more I review this, the clearer I am that that, is, that study was very good science. Um, that's not the problem. The problem is how we're interpreting it. So, um, and no, I don't think Lancet and, and Harvard are going to pot. And I don't think this, uh, the, these articles are evidence that they are. I think there is... Some things about this uh, whole topic that we still don't understand. <clears throat> Here's a couple of questions. So, for example, is the U curve and the 51 um, percent inflection point real? I think it is. We'll see that again on the U, U curve when I show it. And what happened to the plant based carb replacement? And is that real? I'll show you that in a minute too. Actually, just be patient, I'll get there. Um, and what does this mean? What, what, here's some possible explanations, and it may be one of these, it may be a combination of these, it may be something totally different. <clears throat> but I, I am convinced that glycemic index and glycemic load are a major component here. Even if it's <laughs> just that cutting your carbs decreases your, uh, your hunger, and allows you to cut your calories, especially when you're insulin resistant, maybe that's the issue. Um, decreases appetite, decreases inflammation. Or maybe it's something else, and I call this the David Mines rule. David Mines is a friend of mine. He's a nutritionist. He um, does, basically he does lectures for a living, helping people understand cardiovascular risk and inflammation. Uh, using mostly the bale uh literature. And his point was, uh, low carb is sort of a red herring because um, diets full of broccoli and cauliflower are low carb. I mean, uh, 
I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Broccoli and cauliflower are nothing but carbs, according to David. And so therefore, low carb may be <laughs> just a marker for lower calorie foods. Um, <coughs> you know, there's probably, <laughs> excuse me, some, pardon the ramapril, pardon, um, probably some reality to that as well, because I um, demonstrated myself, I could gain 10 pounds quickly on a, quote, low carb diet. And it was because I ate three big meals and lots of oils, um, leaned a little bit less plant-based because I was getting a lot more cheeses and a lot more uh, uh, meats in that diet at that time. But again, I was able to gain weight on it. I have to back off to two meals a day and manage the calories in those meals if I'm going to keep my uh, weight down. Here's a picture of the article itself. Once you actually go through the article, uh, you do see at one of the, the tables is this U-curve. And there's several questions about this U-curve. The first one that I have, he, well, let me just orient you to it. This is the hazard ratio. The higher you go up this hazard ratio, the more likely you are to die. This is the percent of carbohydrates in the calories eaten. Now again, this was uh, the follow-up of the ERIC trial. So remember, ERIC was um, it was the four four or five communities in the U.S. Jackson, Mississippi, uh, Siler or Tyler County, North Carolina, uh, someplace in uh, Maryland, and I can't remember the other place. So and again, uh, almost all um, biracial, uh, black and white Americans. Um, now these started back in their fifth, ages 15 to 30, I think, and then uh, were surveyed every five years for about 30 years. They saw this inflection point, and that inflection point, uh, if you look at the other study that I reviewed recently, the Massachusetts study, again, mostly white and uh, black um, Americans, mostly middle-aged, Guess what? They did a U-curve as well, and 51% was the number that they saw for the inflection. Uh, what do I mean by inflection? Okay, here's the thing. Once you, uh, once you decrease below 51% of your calories as carbohydrates, your mortality rate starts increasing. And when you go beyond it, <clears throat> You've got a wide spread, but again, it tends to fluctuate right around here. Now, here's a couple of other things um, to think about. One of my questions is, what is this? These groups that are going way high carbs um, and having a longer uh, lifespan. That would be this group here. That's like Japanese. Um, there were no Japanese by the way, few if any Japanese in either the ERIC follow-up or the PURE study. Um, <clears throat> here's another thing too. This is missing. Uh, there was a significant chunk of people right here that they did not show in this curve. And I'll show you that, and it was in the study, the ERIC follow-up study. That's part of what I don't, un don't understand. Let me show you the, the numbers here. <clears throat> what they said was, and I would quote it, but basically <clears throat> they said there was a significant uh, chunk of people who did go uh, lower on their carbs, but were healthier. And those were people who substituted, substituted carbs for, <laughs> for plant protein and fat. They meant, it, grammatically, it should have been substituted carbs with plant uh, protein and fat. Now, how do you know that they live better, longer? Look at these um, hazard ratios. If it's less than one, <laughs> you live longer than the average. <coughs> Again, for those of you viewers that that cough uh, bothers, I'm sorry. So the... The guys that there were a significant number of people, 
and they did a complete separate analysis for these people that had uh, lower carbs, less than 51%, but they substituted uh, with plant uh, oils, fats, and, uh, and protein. These people were healthier. Now, <clears throat> in this same analysis, they looked at those that did uh, substituted lower carbs with meats, and again, higher hazard ratios. What was interesting to me, <clears throat> a <clears throat> one of the questions I have, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, is why they didn't show it. That would be over here, right? Decreased carbs uh, and less than 1.0. They didn't show it in this uh, thing, and again, I don't know why. Maybe it was a small enough subgroup, and that is a fairly small subgroup. How many people do you know have decreased their carbs and replaced it with um, plant substitutes, plant oils and fats? Um, good question. So they, <clears throat> I do that, and that's what I recommend. Um, excuse me, the ERIC follow-up trial also did this U-curve for the PURE study. The PURE study was the study that was published a year previously um, in Lancet, where it showed that you had a, um, increased carbs caused you to die earlier. Still, same inflection point. Now, a broader uh, band here and here. Now again, this is the band that you don't see on the U-curve for um, for the ERIC study. <clears throat> and what does that mean? Remember this is the section where you have people that have lower carbs as a percentage yet a um, longer lifespan. So what's going on there? I don't know. I don't think that that means the recent study is a bad one, and they did do a full analysis of it. They did break it down and look at plants, and that, again, probably comes from some of the original bias of the study design folks. Does it mean that 51% um, is not the inflection point? I don't think it does. I think we're seeing that 50% way too often. Um, <clears throat> as you may remember, the, uh, the ERIC follow-up study uh, did a uh, lit review, a what's called a meta-analysis. And in this meta-analysis, basically what they're looking at was all the previous studies like um, the nursing health study, the healthcare uh, provider or healthcare professionals uh, studies. <clears throat> here, there are two sections here. One is looking at um, the, uh, the death rate or hazards ratio uh, for high versus medium carbs or low versus moderate carbs and high versus moderate carbs and the um, here again is that cutoff about 50 percent as you see over and over and over again up here it was a it was a higher cutoff because again you're looking at high carbs uh, versus moderate carbs at 60 percent. Again, uh, mean percent in the uh, lower part. So the, the people with the lower ones, again, had higher um, hazard ratios. They died earlier. And why was that? <sighs> again, I do, do not know. <clears throat> So, there are several things that come out of this, uh, still leaving me questions. As I said, you go back to the Massachusetts study where they translated these um, uh, food history questionnaires, 24-hour uh, questionnaires, into actual diet for these um, middle-aged European, African uh, American uh, folks. Again. A, fairly biracial community, and again, you just see huge um, glycemic index stuff, really bad food, uh, all-purpose flour, white sugar, white uh, bread, white rice, cola 
products. Um, you dig deeper into this and you see, again, uh, very high glycemic index. What's interesting is uh, in these lists of most common carbs for uh, what these people were eating, um, you see something very, uh, very high compared to what they could be eating. So, <clears throat> what does that mean? Well, I started this video with saying there's several things about these studies that I still don't know what they mean. So don't ask me. I don't know. Thank you.